If I could reset my home lab and start all over, would I make the same choices? Would I choose the same hardware, networking, or even rack? Or would I rethink all of my choices and build something entirely different? I built my home lab from the ground up, which started with a few old PCs with some networking to a small server rack with enterprise servers. If I had the chance to make some changes or even get rid of pieces of it altogether, would I? That's a question I get asked quite a bit, and I think the answer is, Maybe. Would I choose the same server rack or even get rid of a rack altogether? Am I happy with my patch panel and the choices to use keystones over wiring it myself? Would I choose the same networking equipment, including my gateway, firewall, and even my PoE switch? Am I happy with my One Use servers, the CPUs, the RAMs, and even the disks? And there are some who ask if converting an old PC into a server and putting it into a rack is worth it. I guess I've got my work cut out for me, either defending all of my choices or you learning from my mistakes. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Micro Center. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to a Micro Center, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs to hard drives, to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and much, much more. It's your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. And don't worry, if it's your first time building a PC, they have lots of helpful and knowledgeable staff that are there to help you out. Micro Center has been generous enough to give a free SSD to all new customers and is available in store only. So see the link in the description for details. So if I could change anything about my home lab, would I? If I could start it all over, what would I choose? Would I keep each of these items in my rack or upgrade and get rid of it? Let's take a look. My patch panel. I've gotten some criticism from this patch panel and many have asked why I didn't crimp all of my own wires. Well, it's because I didn't want to crimp all of my own wires. This patch panel has worked out great and works really well. I'm actually considering getting another one. I know, I've said this before, but I really wish they made a half U height patch panel so that I could put one on top of my switch and one below. But overall, super happy with it and not something I'm looking to replace anytime soon so I'm giving this a key. Do I regret choosing my UDM Pro as my gateway and firewall? Absolutely not. This appliance has been great, except for the occasional bugs with firmware, it's been working out nicely. I even started using Unify Protect camera system along with adding a lot of cameras. Now, for my gripes. As you can see, I have uplinked this to my switch via 10 gig DAC. And you can see I have a 10 gig WAM port here. However, nothing is attached. I really wish Unify would let me reassign this to a LAN port so I could have another 10 gig port and that would save me from buying a 10 gig switch, which is probably why they're not gonna do it. One of my other complaints was the lack of VPN options. However, they just recently added support for a new VPN they call Teleport, which is actually WireGuard. So it's really awesome. So all in all, I'm happy with it and I'm giving it a key. Next is my Switch Pro 24 port PoE switch. This is one heck of a switch. It has 24 ports, all PoE, 16 of which are PoE+, and eight of which are PoE++, which is great for all of those PoE cameras and Pis I have around the house. It even has two 10 gig SFP plus ports. This switch is rock solid. I've never had any issues with it, but this is one of the few purchases where I've had a little buyer's remorse afterwards, and here's why. For about half the price, I could get the Switch 16 PoE, which would give me 16 ports, but only half are PoE, but probably enough to run my PoE devices around my house. The other downside to that Switch, though, is that you only get two 1 gig SFP ports, which might be worth it if you just don't mind having a 1 gig uplink. And the next jump up for my current Pro Switch is about a 50% increase in price, but comes with twice the ports. Not only the gigabit ports, but also twice the 10 gig SFP plus ports, giving me four in total. So if I had to do it all over again, I would have gone with this one instead. If you ever think that you'll need more than 24 gigabit ports and more than two 10 gig ports, I would buy up to future-proof yourself a little bit. So keep it or upgrade it. Well, if I didn't need to expand so quickly, I would definitely give it a keep. However, as much as I hate to do this, I'm giving it a upgraded. Is that up or down? I'll go down due to how rapidly I'm expanding. Next are my pair of super micro servers. 
The one U form factor is what sold me. However, it's the same decision that's so controversial. One U servers typically mean louder servers, less room for expansion, less drives, and other compromises. <laughs> My use case for these servers was to be a hypervisor, and what I wanted most out of these servers was enough CPU cores to drive 10 to 15 virtual machines, as well as enough RAM and having at least four slots for drives. I think I got everything that I wanted out of these servers. No, it doesn't have dual sockets. However, I was more worried about efficiency over more cores, so one socket is fine with me. I do wish I would have bought more RAM when I first purchased it. Originally, I bought 256 gigs of DDR for both of these servers, but then had to double it in a few weeks, and that's after the RAM prices went up. I am also okay that it only has one power supply, but I'll be in a bit of a bind if that one dies out while I wait for parts. I bet you're wondering about the one PCI Express slot. Yeah. That's kind of a bummer, but that's one of the sacrifices I had to make when going to a 1U. I don't think I need 10 gig for these servers since all of their VM storage is local, but if I ever decide against that, I'm gonna have to fill that one slot with the 10 gig net. The only other thing I would change is the solid state drives that I bought. Not the brand, or the price, or the speed, but the capacity. I have four one terabyte drives in each of those servers and have them configured in a RAID Z2. This only gives me half capacity, so I only get about two terabytes of usable space. That sounds like a lot, but when you have 10 to 15 virtual machines on each server, it runs out really quick. I'm also happy with the efficiency and performance of the 14 core 24 thread Intel CPU that I bought. So would I choose this again if I started all over? Thumbs up definitely going to keep these. Next up is my PC conversion. I'm not going to focus on what's inside because it could be anything, but more on the fact that I sunk money into an old PC converting it to a rack mount server. This one's a tough call because it's a lot cheaper to just keep your old PC in the old case and it's pretty much free. But there is something to be said about having your entire system in a rack with everything else. Easier for cable management, networking, and even battery backup. I will say though, what you get in convenience in racking, you end up paying for in cable management within the case. It's kind of a rat's nest in there, but most of it is my fault since I've been using this as a test bed for a few things. But its primary use case is a local backup of all my data. A second local copy, if you will. Also, this will end up housing some of my video cards if I ever move Plex out of my One U servers, and a case like this gives you plenty of height to do that. So, this is definitely a key for me. Disk shelf. Oh, my disk shelf. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to pick this up before all the Chia farmers wanted this, and I got a really good deal at the time. But it does draw a lot of power. I could almost power another server with the CPU and components with the same wattage. This shelf has worked out wonderfully over the years, housing all of my video footage, but I think I overbought at the time not knowing how fast my storage would grow, nor how much power this thing would draw. That being said, I got this really cheap and it's working great so this is a tough call but if i were in the market today for different storage i hate to say it but i would give this say upgrade it based on how much power it draws and how much space it takes up it's still really awesome though this is my empty slot i would definitely give this a keep unless you find something to put in it and then i would say upgrade it it's an empty slot next is my ups this trip light UPS is one of the most affordable UPSs that you can rack and mount on the market. It's worked out great for me the last few years and has saved my data and network a few times. However, it only gives me 10 minutes of runtime before it shuts down. Now, that's barely enough time to run down there and power everything off safely. They do sell another model of this that allows you to connect additional batteries. However, that model was sold out when I needed to make a purchase. So I kind of settled on this one. So what rating do I give it? Well, based on my current consumption and the fact that it can't connect additional batteries to it, this one's a really tough call. I don't think I'm gonna spend any more money on batteries in the foreseeable future. And I might be able to save some power by removing the disc shelf at some point. So for me, this is a keep with a caution, but willing to upgrade it in the future. Can I do that? <laughs> Can I choose both? Yeah, I can. These are my rules. Last but not least is this rack. This 18U rack is great. When I bought it, 
My intention was to limit the amount of space that I have in my rack so I won't be tempted to outgrow it. I didn't think about the fact that it would be nice to have a few more slots just in case for expansion even if it's for another system that's not running 24 seven. I think this is the perfect rack for anyone who's thinking about building a server rack and will give you plenty of space. However, being that I'm in the industry now and creating content, it would be nice to have at least six more units of space. Famous last words, right? So while I always recommend this rack to everyone because of how affordable it is and the build quality, for me, I would have to say that this one is a upgrade it. <laughs> so I can put more equipment into it. Hopefully this gives you some ideas and some guidance on my choices over the last few years. While I don't regret any of the decisions I made, knowing what I know now, I would probably have leaned more towards efficiency and capacity, something that I think we're all looking for in our home lab. And just because I gave something an upgraded rating doesn't mean it won't work for you. These are all great products. So I hope you learned something today. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I thought like, hey, that's, uh, we, 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 we could do something for, for people that are in the home lab community because there is a lot of, of stuff to learn. <laughs> There's a lot of change going on right now with, with either people shifting to the cloud or back from the cloud or hybrid cloud or going to Kubernetes or not doing Kubernetes or doing whatever. And I just kept thinking like, I, 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 I have this idea, but I, I, it was not fully baked. This was an idea that I honestly thought about for six months. And I was like, how can I do this? How can I do this? And I thought, you know what, <laughs> being the procrastinator I am, <laughs> I'll do it at my 100K video because that gives me time. Uh, and then that gives me, uh, you know, the 100 in 100. I thought, well, why not? Yeah, I'll give back. Um, so I, start, I, I kicked it down the road, <laughs> basically procrastinating.